Welcome back, Phoenix, Arizona, Grand Canyon University, GCU Arena, the UIC Flames in town tonight to take on the Lopes and the arena is ready to rock. The Havocs decked out in their favorite Christmas sweater. A busy day here on campus as the Lady Lopes taking down Cal, Cal Poly today, 64-59, a pair of double-doubles. Marina Laramie had 21 and 11, and Vanessa Murphy with 15 points and 10 rebounds today for the Lady Lopes. So a lot of good things happening for the women's and the men's basketball team. For more, we kick it upstairs and check in with Kate Longworth. Well, thank you, Mark, and you mentioned the women's basketball team, and really I think a lot can be said for their dynamic coaching staff. For Crystal Thomas, she was ready to hang up the sneakers. That was until she saw head coach Trent May at a church speaking event. Well, after that engagement at the church, he said to her, I feel like there could be a future for you on the GCU basketball courts. Well, Thomas, she took him up on that, and ever since, for assistant coach Thomas, this has been a great thing for her, being part of the Lopes basketball program. Being drafted was one of the best feelings I've ever had. I was actually really caught off guard. I wasn't sure exactly where I was gonna fall during the draft, even if I was gonna be drafted at all. Um, so I actually was working out during the draft. I actually missed when my name was put up there. And I came back in the weight room, they're like, you got drafted, you got drafted. I was like, oh, I got drafted. So it was really exciting, really special, just to know that you've been drafted to one of the best women's league in the world. To be in the WNBA, to be part of this amazing group of female athletes is remarkable. There's 12 teams, 12 players, so to be one of 144 people to have been doing this for now five seasons is incredible. And so I'm thankful every single day for what I get to do, and I'm just really honored to be able to play against the best players in the world, the best women in the world, and compete against them every day. I ended up at GCU basically through divine intervention. I was entered at the time, and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. Was I going to be healthy enough to go back and play, or was I gonna have to try to figure out something else? So in the meantime, I was doing a lot of public speaking. And so I was invited to come out here to speak at Impact Church. And Trent and Angie May, they came to listen to me speak. Angie was my chaplain when I played out here for the Mercury. And so they just happened to come and hear me speak and we went out to eat and they joked like, hey, if you ever wanna uh, get into coaching, you know, you can come out here. And I was like, huh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I was, you know, my focus was, can I get my leg healthy enough to get back and play? Well, um, my rehab just wasn't going the way that I wanted it to. And Trent ended up calling me on the phone and asked me, hey, do you want to come out here and coach? And, you know, I knew when he called me, it was definitely the Lord calling me to go to come out here and coach. And that's how I ended up here at GCU. When Crystal Thomas answered that call, she joined a staff with distinct specialties that blend together to create a competitive team. We do have different skill sets, but I think that's what makes us really unique as a staff is that we can tap into so many different areas because each person brings something new to the table. We're not all the same, which is a good thing, but the biggest part about all of us is we're all focused on the same thing. We're all focused on coming together, gelling together, and focused on winning and bringing the first black championship to GCU. Uh, so it's not in a competitive way, it's a competitive way in competing against other opponents. That competition brought Thomas back to an old haunt this season, Cameron Indoor Stadium, where she played for the Duke Blue Devils and Coach McCauley. Just another special feeling to be back in Cameron. Um, as soon as I walked back in, just the lights and the court, it just, uh, there was a flood of memories that came back. It was just crazy to think of how many games I played out there, how many games I've won. There was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears poured out onto that court as well from the time that I was uh, back at Duke. So. It was a pretty crazy feeling to be back and especially to be coaching, you know, I, I when I left I never really thought I'd go back in that standpoint. So to be able to be able to compete against my coach was really special and it's something that I'll be able to carry with me for a long time. What I learned from this past season is just how special the moment is. Whatever the moment may be, just enjoy the moment that you're in. You know, when I was playing beforehand, you get so caught up kind of in just the rat race of what you're doing, trying to make this team, make that team, earn this contract, make that contract. Um, this time it was just enjoy the season, enjoy every day. Even if it was a three hour practice and I was exhausted, you know, it was like, I loved being out there. I loved being able to just be out there around the people that I was around, doing what I was doing. So it's really made me appreciate enjoying the moment and I've been able to carry that back to here to GCU and just pouring that into the girls. You know, sometimes you can get so, far-sighted and looking at the big picture that you forget to just enjoy what's right in front of you.
At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, Welcome master's, back. It's the Lopes pregame show degree. here on Take 3 TV. And we know level. you're multitaskers at home, so as you're watching the game tonight with your phone in hand, make sure to find us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag Lopes Rising. As you see right now, tweets are appearing at the bottom of the screen. That tweet could be yours and you could be a part of our broadcast tonight. I'm Kate Longworth. Thank you so much for joining us on tonight's game as we count you down to tip off. It'll be a great game between the Lopes as they prep for what they hope will be another exciting victory after that early one against San Diego State earlier this week. And it's a special night at the game as well. I am joined now by city manager of Glendale, Kevin Phelps. Thank you so much for being here, especially on a busy day. You started off with the parade for Glendale, the Christmas parade. Then you came here. It is Glendale night here at the game, and now you're ready to take it to GCU game. Tell me what the day's been all about. Oh, wow, what a great end of the, what a fantastic day. We've been looking forward to this for over a month now. And you guys had a tailgate party, and I understand there was a special guest on hand. Dan Marley came out to talk to you. Absolutely. What did he have to say? That was phenomenal. I, I used to live in Seattle, and remember when he played for the Suns, and he used to kill us? It was great to see him come and very inspirational. Yeah, and now I know you're you're cheering for his team now, and I know as a former Washington State fan, this is hard for you to wear purple, but it's looking good on you now. And so just take me through what the partnership's been like for the city of Glendale and GCU. Well, as I mentioned, I've only been here about 10 months, but within my first several months, I realized what a phenomenal institution GCU was. It blew me away what this college has been doing, what this university's been doing the last four or five years and we wanted to partner with GCU and uh, so we put together a night for all of our employees and we have uh, almost 800 uh, Glendale wow. family members and employees here tonight. That's amazing and what's it do for your community when a university like GCU right now is grabbing national attention? We were just talking about what Rick Pitino had to say and you said you can't wait to see this crowd in action because of that. How does that carry off to the community as well? Well I just think it, it, it shows how far this program and this college has come and, uh, and I, I think that what Rick Patino said about the school blew me away because they, they play in some pretty amazing arenas and college environments across the country. To say this was his toughest place says a lot for the student body and for the fans that are here. And we're just thrilled to be part of it. Well, we're very happy to have you here, part of our pregame show. Thank you so much for joining us. And enjoy the game tonight. It's going to be a fun one. All right, go Antelopes. All right, thank you, Kevin Phelps, for being with us here. And thank you, audience, for 3TV. We're happy to have you. So stick around as we count you down to tip off. Right after this, Mark is back with us, and we go around the whack. You're watching the pregame show here on 3TV. Founded on the belief that the entrepreneurial dream is an engine that drives innovation forward in a global marketplace, the Colangelo College of Business educates and develops values-driven business leaders. Our graduates exemplify the principles of servant leadership and entrepreneurship. GCU's strong Christian identity informs the education you receive, integrating our Christian values with the business curriculum. The college features more than 25 programs from the bachelor through the master's level catering to traditional, evening, and online students. These programs serve a diverse set of aspiring business professionals who not only learn in the classroom, but gain real-world experience operating actual businesses. Our students also receive unique access to Jerry Colangelo's legendary experience, leadership, and connections throughout the business world. Find out more at gcu.edu slash business. Welcome back, just about set for tip-off, but before that, let's take a look at games around the whack. The UMKC Kangaroos beating William Jewell today, 93-71, Lavelle Boyd, 21 points. Also, the Utah State Aggies holding on against the Utah Valley Wolverines. Connor Toulson, 24-11.
for the Wolverines. GCU women winners this afternoon, 64-59, a pair of double doubles. And uh, Portland State and CSU Bakersfield, the Roadrunners, that's back in men's action. That's tonight, so a busy, busy slate around the whack. Great Falls, Argos, and uh, Seattle U going head-to-head -head tonight. And Chicago State taking on Bradley. Mark McClune, Kate Longworth just about set for tip-off. This place is really rocking right What's now. What's happening right behind us? You can see the choreographed here. This is called the Purple Pre-Game Party, and this is just a preview at another feed of that. Of what is to come tonight? Very excited to have you in the 3TV oh, crew so along to tonight. It's I just wish I would have worn a, an ugly Christmas sweater. I know. I feel you like know. we missed out on that, but you know the habits are pretty nice. Maybe by the end of the game we can get that. Or hey, you can just paint ho on your, ho 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 on your uh, shirt. Your the there shirt we go. Here. They're, they're the most talked about, I think, uh, student section right now in the country, being compared to the Cameron Crazies. And I, I cannot wait to watch this one tonight. Yeah, the great thing is a great crowd here, a great atmosphere, and even better basketball. So we are counting you down to tip off just moments away, right on the other side. Barry and Scott with us to call all the action. Mark and I will be sticking around for the game. And we're excited to have you along for the ride. GCU had a big victory against San Diego State. And tonight, they go after the UIC Flames. Game time, right after this. isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice, I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. We have to start establishing that this is our place. From here on out. Hey, this is what we played before. We're better safe than them. Let's go. Come on, go, go get him now. Let's go. Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes play host to the Flames from the University of Illinois, Chicago. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA team Scott Williams, I'm Barry Vitell, Kate Longwood, and Mark McGloon will be along in just a moment. Well, the Lopes riding high after a Wednesday victory against the Aztecs from San Diego State. What a huge win that was. It was a fantastic game. They played really hard. I mean, short of handed battle against a team like San Diego State. Class team coach by like Coach Fisher. Come in here, the Havocs had this place electric. The top was going off this place. Kerwin Smith stepped up big off that bench. When Fans, Keontae Vernon got into some bell trouble. No the doubt Western about it. Some, well, some University. names we haven't heard the about in the past definitely stepped up. Athletes, Dwayne Russell was there as, as well. But how we about Frayer and Fifi? They were fantastic. The fearless freshman, I'm starting to call these guys. Fifi, a new from behind the yard, knocking down three point shots, playing fantastic defense, getting the game winning steal and layup. And uh, I just love the way Oscar Flair comes in there too, drives the ball hard to the hole, but it protects the paint. I love this one right here, just kind of get it transition out the break, scores it for the defense, has a chance to set up. And he knocks down a three point shot out of the corner after he had missed one just the time before. So 
A lot of swagger from these young freshmen. Combining, as you see it, 34 points, 8 of 13 from the arc for Fifi Adu and Oscar Freyer. Well, the Flames from UIC, led by a sophomore by the name of Dikembe Dixon. He leads the team in scoring and rebounding. Yeah, he's pretty darn good. Shoots over 50% from the field. He's 15th in the nation in scoring, as a matter of fact. He shoots 36 percent from behind the yard, loves to play from underneath the basket, back around, out to the top, kisses and curls, likes to drive it to the hole. Now, glad to get this thing started. We'll send it over to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to GCU Arena for tonight's men's basketball matchup between the UIC Flames and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with the word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by the Director of Residence Life, Matt Hopkins. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the privilege of being here tonight. Thank you as well for blessing these young men with incredible athletic ability as well as the desire to work hard. We commit them to you tonight and ask for safety as they compete on the floor. Lord, we also pray uh, your blessing on the students as they wrap up their semester with the assignments and finals. May your strength be with them, and may your blessing be on each person here tonight throughout this Christmas season. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Matt Hopkins. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the playing of our national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by the Basis Flagstaff Band Director, John Eater. Mr. John Eater. John Eater with our national anthem. Matt Hopkins with our prayer. And we are about ready to tip things off between the UIC Flames and their head coach Steve McLean in his second season. After five seasons as an assistant associate head coach at Indiana, his 4-4 four four squad coming in after a 90-76 loss to Eastern Illinois last Sunday at home. Here's a starting five. Tarkas Ferguson, Godwin Bowen, Dikembe Dixon, Clint Robinson, and Ty Odiasi. Yeah, we're going to pop Ty Odiasi because this guy is an absolute roadblock underneath. Led the nation a year ago in shot blocks over 3.2 a ball game. He's off to doing it again. This year, he blocked eight shots against UTSA. 
He had nine and seven against Eastern with only one blocked shot. So you know he's making a look to try to protect that basket, block a lot of shots tonight, make up for some that he didn't get last time they played on Sunday night. Let's introduce you to Grand Canyon University. After a big 76-72 victory against San Diego State, here are Dan Marley's starting five. Dwayne Russell, second in the nation in scoring. Jared Martin, Keontae Vernon, Darian Clark, and Oscar Freyer. Yeah, we're going to keep our eye on Dwayne Russell tonight. You mentioned his scoring second in the nation. He plays every minute of the basketball game. I wonder if that might start taking its toll. Wants to see if his production dips in the second half just a bit. Look for him to be aggressive early offensively and try to get himself going, knowing that his shot may not be there in the second half when he can dish to some of his teammates. Dan Marley, his fourth season as head coach of the Lopes. His associate head coach is Todd Lee. The assistants are Chris Cremelone and TJ Benson. Director of basketball operations is Luke Della Riva. Dwayne Russell leading the team. 26.7 points per game, 38 minutes per game, average for zero, the hero. Shaq Carr getting the honors in the center ring. Scott Williams are three keys to the game. Yeah, the Blues would be number one. I mean, this is a trap game, a potential trap game for these Lopes. They had a big win against San Diego State. You got Arizona on Wednesday. You got the Flames sitting right in front of you. Don't look past the Flames. Come out here and compete with that same energy you did against the Aztecs. And then the loop. You got to hit the boards hard against the Flames. They out rebound teams by four rebounds a game. So they're slow starters, but they crash the glass. And that's how they stay in ball games. And then deep dish. They've talked about the big man, Odiasi, underneath, looking to block shots. When you get in there, you got to do a deep dish, pass the ball under his armpits to the big so they can go up and finish with strength above the rim. Love the theme, making me hungry. Who doesn't like a good deep dish? Oh. Chicago style. Geno's pizza, East. Huh? Oh, 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 man. Oh. The officials, Casey McClellan, Daryl Zelena, and Juan Corral. Crowd will remain on its feet here at GC Arena till the Lopes hit their opening bucket. Belongs to the Flames. Bowen leads it. Ball moving quick. Dixon back out front. Robinson leaves there for Tarkus Ferguson. In the paint. Dishes back over. Back. Tipped away from Keontae Ferguson. Per Keontae Vernon with help from Gary and Clark. Yeah, that was a nice job. A lot of lopes there helping one another, showing on screens to recover into their man. Gave them nothing inside. Vernon looking for Russell, but Bowen was all over him, picked off by Dixon, and he puts it back to the third. Yeah, very athletic, live legs, great on defense, shoots 52% because a number of his shots come just where the hell one came from, where he's throwing it down through the basket. Bowen eyeing Russell. Russell to his right, now turns. Up high, hits the side of the backboard. And Odiasi right there, Johnny on the spot. I think he might have got a thumb on that ball. Dixon to his left, near side. Ferguson back out. Driving in the paint, waiting. Goes up and over Freyer. Nice job down there, driving that ball to the painted area. Might have got away with a little bunny hop. Officials did call it, then he had the soft touch. Laid it in. Couple layups to start this basketball game will not make Coach Marley happy. Russell's shot is heavy. Rebound pulled down by Tarkus Ferguson. Ferguson to his left. 
Dixon wanted some support underneath and nobody there except for Clint Robinson. Quick timeout by Dan Marley. Two As, dunks in a layup. Wow. You can't have that. You just cannot have that. You have to protect your basket. We watch this team in warm-ups. They're an energetic bunch, Woo. but they love to rim run. Youngest team in the nation, 0.71 years of experience, and they're showing that youthful enthusiasm here out to a six-zip lead. Well, the best way to go on the road is to try to take the crowd out of it. They know the Havocs are an advantage to the Lopes, and they're trying to get out to a quick start. A lot of we talk about drawing the defenders, then dishing it on Odiasi. That's exactly what they did on Keontae Vernon. Slipped it to his man underneath, and it's an easy two points. So these Lopes have to do a better job of keeping them out of the middle. Vernon to inbound. Edwin Bowen from Toronto, Ontario, doing a good job against Russell early on. Player, far side, back out front to Clark. Clark to his right, hits Jared Martin. At the arc, Prayer looks for three. Come oh, That was a nice execution right there. Give Jerry and Clark a hockey assist on that one for setting a man side screen. Free and Prayer for a clean look. Dixon turn around. Too much. Clark and Vernon. Pulls down that rebound. Gonna give him like a half each on that one. Oh. Russell. Martin. Oops. Wants to leave for Russell. Got an open look. Floater and in. Russell. Good work by Jared Martin. Very nice. I think they gave Oscar Frere a two pointer that last time to score six four. But Really? Russell has really worked hard on his floater over the course of the summer and his men rate jump shot. Dixon, that's for three. Pull down by Dwayne Russell. Up to Vernon. Deontay Vernon. Oh, tap back out there for Jared Martin and the rebound picked up by the Flames. Ferguson. Odiasi back to Ferguson. To his right, driving paint, pushes back out, open look. Too heavy was the shot by Robinson and the Havocs will let him know about the air ball. Russell, ooh, it's knocked off there, but Martin there for support. He goes left hand high and gets fouled. Yeah, nice job that time by Jared Martin. Picks up this basketball, goes, takes it all away. And I love this one here by Frere. Let's see if he's behind that line or that right foot maybe just snuck onto the purple line. And I love this one here by Russell. Gets a nice little DHO and takes that one right off the Martin handoff and a little floater over the top of the defense. Good to see Jared Martin aggressive early in this basketball game. Martin at the line, Lopes down by two. Wasn't happy with that basketball, huh? <laughs> Threw it back at the official, like take some of the sweat off this ball. That helped. The Lopes beat UIC two seasons ago. In that game, Ryan Marley had 15. Kerwin Smith chipped in with 12. Ryan in attendance again this evening, supporting his Lopes. To the right, Bowen. He's to his right, Russell eyeing him. Back out, Dixon. Ferguson, back out front. Hits out, Dixon. Dixon eyed by Martin. Top of the key. Rebound. Chased after and picked up by Godwin Bowen. Yeah, that's where this team loves to live. They miss a lot of shots early in basketball games and you can keep them outside. But they will go get it off the glass. That's only their first offensive rebound, but something to watch as this game unfolds. Bounce pass. Oh, Jerry and Clark. Yeah, they had a party on the 10th floor right there, and Jerry and Clark said, you weren't invited. I thought that was a pretty clean swat on the ball, but I think he catches them with the underbody. Timeout, six to five. The Flames on top of the Lopes early on. Keep it right here on 3TV. I'm a student here 
at Grand Canyon University studying hospitality management. My hospitality courses here are giving me a high quality education from professors that I know have been successful. Being able to work while I'm in school has enriched my college experience. I feel like I know where I'm going and what I want to do. I've gone through things that can't necessarily be taught. And so that paired with everything that GCU is doing for me, I feel like, you know, is setting me up for success. To have someone say, like, I want you, that's like a lot for someone like me. They're changing people's lives. By changing my life, now you change my little brothers and sisters because they saw that I went to college. It'll just be, you know, my greatest accomplishment, not just because it's a diploma, but because, you know, I did what no one really thought I could do. When they say, find your purpose, they mean it. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. I'm Dewey, a student here at GCU studying communications. My dad graduated from GCU in 2009, and he is definitely bleeding purple. He loves GCU to the max. And me choosing to follow in his footsteps was the best idea I could have chosen. I absolutely love sports, playing them and watching them, and I could talk about them all day. GCU has made it possible for me to pursue my passion. Welcome back to GCU Arena. I'm Kate Longworth. I'm here where it is ugly sweater night tonight at the game. and be getting national attention after Rick Pitino complimented this crowd on being the best in college basketball. And guys, we want to remind folks at home, over the holidays, the Lopes still in action. They'll be on 3TV next Saturday, and the Lopes also in action on the 20th, 22nd, and 28th. So great opportunities while the kids are on school to get them out to a basketball game. That sweater was looking sharp. I like that. Rudolph, huh? Our ugly sweater night's coming up right before Christmas, right? We're doing, we're doing the 22nd, right? 22nd, yeah. You have one it's in gonna mind be high already? Uh, no, but I know you have a few to choose from. <laughs> I got a couple. Do you? I do. I like ugly sweaty part. Ugly sweater parties. Yeah. One of my, some of my, my favorites to go to. You get to poke fun at people. Yeah. I mean, you don't normally get to do that. That's true. At least not to their face. You're still ugly! Please the Flames started at 3 of 4 from the field since they're 0 for 4. Well, they've kept them out of so the paint. Bucket. Yeah, they had they had six layups there, so now they kept them out of the paint. Can't score. Front of the rim, pulled down by Ty Odiasi. Bowen back down. Dice in the game now for UIC. Driving is Dixon. Martin got a hand on it. It was pushed out by Clark. It'll belong to the Flames with 13 ticks on the shot clock. Martin did a really nice job playing defense. And while he was retreating and getting his hand on top of that ball, unfortunately, Clark was not able to pick off the carom. Mitchell Dixon turns. Pulled down by Clark. Oh, Clark rose up with a guy on his back. Snatched that thing like a bear getting a trout out of a stream. Dixon shot five times already. Clark wanted the basketball. Backing in. Odiasi turning, twisting, goes right hand and not fouled by Odiasi. Oh, Clark on one end, does the dirty work on the glass. Then they post him down here on this low left block and he does a nice job. Get right into the body of Odiasi and creating the contact and getting the line, an opportunity to go to the line. Rings out for Darian Clark. That's now 10 of 22 at the charity strike. Yeah, if there's one cheek in his, his game, I would have to say right now, this young man between now and Wax play is going to have to start working on his free throw shooting because they're going to know that he's in the game. He's a liability right now. He wants to get that thing. That, th that uh, free throw percentage up over 60. Saw Keontae working at overtime at the free throw line during the week of practice. Put back and over the top, Tarkis Ferguson. Oh, he was not going to be stopped. Nope. He was taking that ball to the front of the rim. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Martin, far side, back out, Clark. Leaves for Russell, he comes back out. Down again to Clark. 
Up high and up over the top of Geis. Nice job that time. Clark's guy rotated on to Russell, the second leading scorer in the nation, and Clark got an easy basket as a result. Geis looks inside, nice feed down low, and it drops for Clint Robinson. You gotta do your work earlier than that. All right, he's sitting down in front of the rim. You can't stay behind him. If you're looking up through the cylinder, you're in a bad position defensively. Russell is right. Trying to move on Bowen up over the top of him. Rebound, Vernon needs support. Lover already retreating. Leads for Russell. I was wondering when the Lopes were going to get an all O board. Russell, down low, Clark. Couldn't gather it in. Tried to put it back, got his own rebound. Goes over the top. He's he not intimidated way. by Odiasi. He's going right at the big fella. Ferguson pulls back. Leaves for Dixon, their leading scorer and rebounder. Clark is having a tough time getting a good grip on that basketball. He's got a heavily taped left thumb, and every time he goes with that left hand, he's losing the ball. Russell draws that charge. Go back to that one one before Clark had one kind of spit out of his hand there. He tried to go with that. Oh, this is the nice pass by Russell, and nice job. But even that one wasn't a clean layup there. I think that's coming off his thumb. A little funny, and I love that one by Russell, never afraid. As small as he is, probably doesn't weigh but about a buck 75 wet. He's not afraid to give up his body and take a charge. Prayer. Kerwin Smith, nine points last game. He's got it, he's got an open look just inside the arc. Off the mark to the right. Pulled down by the Flames, a tee. Pull back, Ferguson tries to drive again. Hottie, Hottie goes up high, swatted away by Kerwin Smith. Up to Vernon, Vernon driving, goes right hand and in. How about that by Keontae Vernon? He snaps that basketball. He could have given it to Russell, but that's the aspect of his game. He added over the course of the summer, the ability to be able to put the ball on the floor and take it the other end of the bas to that basketball court. Dixon. Goes right, goes left, trying to get up over Martin, and Martin wouldn't have any. Twice now, Martin's played some oh, excellent man. defense against offensive players in attack mode. That's a foul on Dwayne Russell. I'd like to take another look at that one. I didn't see it, but Russell was going about 25 miles per hour, I guess, there probably was some contact. Take a look at this one one more time real quickly. Oh, so if you have that left arm yep. goes up into the shoulder, driving the defender back. Dixon, one of six. Not afraid to shoot. Matthews in the game for the Flames. Dixon only had 10 points his last game. The 15th leading scorer in the country is looking to make up for some lost points. Guys for three. And a drop. How about that one? Soft touch there by Geis out of that right wing. That thing was in and out and back in again, all the way from the land of three. You don't see that very often. 7 of 16 from the arc is Geis. Keontae Vernon. Heavy. Smith battling after it. Vernon swatted at it. Geis quickly up. Well, the wall misses, but it's all a sea of red there, and they put it back. They get that. Had a one-point lead, now all of a sudden a 5-0 run here quickly by UIC. They take a four-point advantage here, just a few more than 11 seconds to play. 11 minutes to play, rather. Fifi Adu in the game. Fifi looking to move on Matthew. Five on the shot clock, bounce for Vernon, leaves for Kerwin Smith, and he puts it on. Oh, that's the interior passing that you need against long athletic players underneath. Great job by Russell Vernon and then Smith with the finish. He's becoming a real finisher around that basket. Out of the guys. Guys, Polo Wale. Polo Wale in the paint, driving on Martin. Leaves it underneath. Oh my, that's too easy for Clint Robinson. Uh-oh, Martin's oh, hurt. Martin is hurt. I think they either 
He got his ankle stepped on or he twisted it. Timeout on the floor. Flames on top by four over the Lopes. We'll have more and we'll check on Jared Martin's status as we continue. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. We will not disappoint. We will not quit. We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family-friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at lopestickets.com. I am Laura Rosoya, and I am majoring in biology with an emphasis in pre-med at Grand Canyon University. The dorm life at GCU definitely helped me build relationships, and I've made great friends on this campus. The quality education here is great. You're testing your limits, but you're going beyond them. It all comes together, the sciences, the ethics, and just everything. It's a beautiful thing. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. And welcome back inside the GCU Arena. The havoc certainly in the Christmas spirit with one of the biggest ugly sweater parties right now in college basketball. Illinois Chicago leads, but GCU certainly the talk of college basketball. Let's go to Twitter and see what everybody's talking about because the Lopes going toe to toe with Louisville and beating San Diego State certainly has college basketball talking. We start with John Rothstein, CBS Sports Insider, saying unreal story unfolding at GCU. Dwayne Russell averaging 20 26 points through eight games. He only averaged nine points a year ago. And look at this, Dickie V. The Lopes got an awesome baby along with Seton Hall, the CU Buffs, and the Creighton Blue Jays after the win over San Diego State. And finally, from the 3TV newsroom, it's Brandon Lee, our 5, 6, 9, and 10 o'clock anchor at 3TV saying the Cameron Crazies ain't got nothing on the Lopes, guys. We're really excited to have Lopes games once again on 3TV this season. The whole newsroom is talking about what's happening over here. Love it. There is definitely a buzz. In Phoenix. And all over the nation. After you battle Louisville, and you knock off San Diego State back-to-back -back years. Vernon, soft, right hand up over the top of Santos. How about that? Bringing Shaq Bard. He comes in and drops a nice dish down low. And Keontae Vernon knows what to do with it. He catches that ball six feet from the basket. So Martin goes out. Here's what he may be over at the uh, trainer's table. Shaq Carr is in the game. We'll check on his status in just a moment. Went off the fingertips of Clint Robinson. Speaking of an update, let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, Barry, you mentioned the trainer's table, and I tell you, you don't like to see a player there, but in this situation, I wish I had seen Martin uh -oh. there because the trainer not here, neither is Martin. That means they took him straight back. You wonder if he's getting an x-ray or just how bad that ankle could be because, like you said, normally they're working on him on the table, trying to stretch him out, get him back out there, but he's not on the court with the team at this moment. I'm no athletic trainer or doctor, but I played enough basketball to know when you twist your ankle and your toes on the ground and your ankle rolls over, that's a high ankle sprain. That is not good. Well, the Lopes definitely have been hit with injuries before the season began. Bubukar Torre, Kenzo Nudo. And then, of course, Matt Jackson went down with the back injury. Josh Vaughn with the scope of the left knee. Kerwin Smith is underneath. Gets back the rebound. Kerwin Smith. He's having a coming out week. He has started it against San Diego State and doing it again here tonight. Shaq Carr was there. And there's going to be a jump and the possession is for the Lopes. Great defensive stand by the Lopes. Kerwin Smith get that block too. I tell you what, this is nice right here. Getting on that old glass. Goes right into the 
body of Odiasi, the third offensive rebound, and then comes back here. Who was that? Oh, it was it Shaq or Fifi got it. And Keontae Murdoch came over and said, I wanted some of this block party too. We are tied at 19. Shaq Carr at 18 at Duke against the Blue Devils. Underneath. Oh! And the foul committed by KJ Santos. This is Geneva, a different. Excuse me, Barry. This is a different Shaq Carr we're seeing. He kind of spent some time on that fine watching the guys. And now he says, I want to have some fun. Coach Marley gives him a shot here, and Martin's coming back to the bench, which is a good thing. But Shaq Carr's doing his thing, dishing that basketball. Good to see number 42 take a seat back on the bench. And the ball game for the Flames, number 15, Godwin Bowen. Godwin Bowen back in the game. Second in assist for the Flames. Battled Dwayne Russell early on. A little surprise, Kerwin Smith been working on his free throw stroke. Only a 22% shooter. He could have told me that if he just looked at him shoot the basketball, but he came up 0 for 2 there. 2 of 11 early on. He'll get this it going. Santos back underneath there and pass in a sea of white. Russell looks to put it back, gets the hoop and the arm with Bowen going. That foul. Well, I don't think there's a player in the state of Arizona better at getting a steal and then moving the ball in transition the length of the floor to the rim and getting body contact. Doesn't always finish these, but that time certainly had the ability to get into that chest, hang just an extra tenth of a second, concentrate on finishing that play. Lopes on a 6-0 run over the last 1 minute 37 seconds. While the Flames have had three turnovers in just under two minutes. Robinson comes back in for KJ Santos. Two percent free throw shooter connects. Ferguson to his right. Adi. Dixon back over to Ferguson. Adi comes back out. Puts it in the hands of the Kembe Dixon. Odiasi backing in on Smith. Big left hand pulled down there. Oh, back into Odiasi, but the hands by the Wolves. Pluck it away. Carr drives, goes up high, and he puts it back inside. Oh, Shaq Carr, been watching Dwayne Russell over on that bench. I thought they, Odiasi should made that big man mistake by putting the ball on the floor that close to the basket. Too many bodies around. Lopes have opened up a five point lead, 8 02 on the clock. We will step aside and be back as the Lopes try to continue this 9 0 run on three TVs. Our company is Comfortpedic Inc. We're a local mattress company here. It's a small family business that my dad started. Now we are providing the dorm mattresses to the most recent dorms here at GCU. One of my professors, he was a professor for my junior year, Paul Waterman. He was the one that started everything. Without him, like this wouldn't have been possible. I came up with a short presentation, a very a quick business pitch. I presented to Dr. Gibb with my company history, and, and he loved it. So first we started with the hotel mattresses. Brett Courtwhite was very helpful, and um, everything ran smoothly. From there, we began with the door mattresses. We asked him what exactly they were looking for in a door mattress, and that's when we started to come up with a prototype. We brought in one of um, the mattresses that GCU currently has. We opened it up. We saw where they needed improvement and, and what we could do best to like maximize a better prototype. And we came up with the mattresses that we have now. And after that, everything ran pretty smoothly, thankfully. You can see the community thriving along with GCU. And just the fact that GCU was willing to buy locally from a company that's only 10 minutes away, you can tell that they really want the community to grow with them. I'm very proud to say I'm a Lope, and I, and I tell it to everyone, like, go to GCU, Lope sub. I'm very, very proud. Welcome back to GCU Arena, where there's eight.
play in the first half, GCU by five. And as you saw, Jared Martin back on the bench with the team. He did roll his ankle, but I talked to the trainer. He said he's good to go. I did see an exchange between Coach Marley and Martin. Marley looked over at him, making sure he is okay. When Martin reassured him, a big smile across Dan's face. And guys, with every play GCU just had, Martin was the first one jumping up cheering on his team and we've seen a lot from that lately and if anyone can attest just how tough Martin is Scott Williams I'd say it's you he's got a pretty big shove to celebrate after the game right yeah Kate he came over here and smacked me right up on, on my chest and he's trying to claim yeah. to my lawyer that I hit him first I, I'm, I don't really want to say what I saw but who initiated the contact. <laughs> Kerwin Smith picked up that loose ball. Rare open look. Doesn't fall. Dixon's there as well as Robinson. Shaq Carr's come in at three steals in two minutes. How about that? GCU started three of 10 shooting since now they're seven of 10. Well, they're getting good looks. They're getting those steals and getting layups. The ball over the top. Ty Odiasu, yeah, Glenwood, yeah. Illinois. Got to take away that strong left shoulder turn to the right hand jump hook. He's been shooting that one since about the fourth grade. Take away his strength, make him come back to that weaker left hand. Russell Frayer for Clark, right at the top of the key, drives up over the top of Trent Robinson. Oh, he, Trent Robinson just got trucked. That was a <laughs> big man down there. He put his hard hat on and took it right to the hole. Nice. Oh, look what he found, Odiasi, and then Clark out of position. Over the top. Oh, this, this is from the other night. Oh, see? Oh, that was my, Whoa, my, my, was, my was a oh, love tap. Look at that. Went right for the solar plexus. I, it was uncalled for. Yeah, I think that's pretty. Uh, I was trying to give though, my, my high five to, to congratulate yeah. on, a, on, a, on a great steal and game winning defensive play. Yeah, that's what and it he attacked like. me. Wow. Sounds like it's going to. This isn't going to end well. <laughs> I'd say Gage match. One of my. I know you're not supposed to have favorite players as a broadcaster. Yeah. Javon Estelle last year for you. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. But I think it might be Martin this year. And he wears my old jersey number. See, I wore number 42, so there's power in that number. Martin! How about your favorite Martin? <laughs> I'll tell you, there's some power in that number. What do I know about being a doctor? I thought the kid had a high ankle sprain. We wouldn't see him for a couple it weeks. Good. And he comes back out here and knocks down a big three-point shot. He's giving young. the loops a six-point lead. Dixon to his right. Working on Freyer. Freyer slapped it away. Oh, Odiasi. He can't put it back. Russell and Vernon pick it up. Yeah, Vernon wanted that board. Big guys don't like it when those little guards oh, steal yeah. their boards the down there. The That's eyeball. the difference between possible double-double later on in this ball game. Yeah. Russell to his lap. Look at here. Teardropper. GCU woke up. They started slow that first six minutes, but all of a sudden now they've woken up at seven straight points. Seven for Russell. Eight point lead. I know. I think they got an injured player out there. Dixon, he got hit in the face, maybe lost the contact. I don't know if it's official. Yeah, the official timeout was taken for the for the players. Yep. Dixon looks like you got this one. Looks like you nailed this one. There you go. I got one right. He's got yeah. the yeah. He's got the solution out there. Yeah. We got a good little mirror. He's got the mirror. I'll try to check. Put, pop that sucker back in. Who was it for GCU that had that horse contact that popped Clark. out the other day? Clark. On the yeah, Clark's got those big hard contacts. And then I love this one. That little misdirection there. They ran that play for Frere the other night, and he knocked down a three. And then this one here, Russell just calls his own number. Gets the defender on his back, caught jersey chasing, and lays that one in over the front of the rim, nice and soft. Flames came out playing real hard early on, and the Lopes woke up and have opened up an eight point lead. Ooh. Adi almost 
lost that to Russell. Please for Ferguson. Dixon back in. Whitaker. Odiasi. Ooh, Freyer got a hand on that. That'll still belong to the Flames, so they only have five seconds on the shot clock. Lopes have really tightened up defensively here after some soft defense early on where they had those three uh, layups or dunks. Coach Marley put that quick timeout, put it into all those easy points inside. Dish underneath, Odiasi is fouled. Basket doesn't drop. That's a tough one. That's an, always been a tough cover for the Lopes. Whenever a team gets that basketball and switches sides of the, ball, of the court with the ball at high speeds like that, puts a lot of pressure on the back line of the defense. Odiasi, a 48% free throw shooter. Oh, my. Oh, goodness gracious. I think he just shot a 15-footer about 11 and a half feet. We're going to say that one slipped out of his hands. I think it was. It was probably that perspiration that Martin had a problem with. Havoc's definitely uh, let opposing teams know. Oh, Vernon can't pull it down, and Lance Whitaker pushes a fresh 30. And long range three, and he connects, does Dixon. That was a blow. That's going to burn Coach Marley's buns a little bit because you get a poor free throw shooter, sub 50 percenter on the line, you give up an offensive rebound for a three point shot. Freyer back out to Russell, Shaq Carr drives, pushes back out to Martin. Martin pulls down the three. And the push by Lance Whitaker. Yeah, I thought that was one that Martin might let fly. He just knocked one down to a similar spot on the floor. Kimbe Dixon in the corner. Yeah, here it is, that corner three balls. Easiest one on the floor to shoot, in my opinion. I love that there, that just crisp pass. But think about the pass, not only did it get there crisply, but it hit the man in an area where all he's got to do is catch and shoot. Lopes have gotten a little chilly here with their shooting. Ferguson. Three-point attempt and nothing but net for Ferguson, a 28% three-point shooter. He had an eight-point lead and the momentum, and you let the Flames come down and knock a couple threes in. Now you're in a two-point game here at 4.30 to go. They need to regain this momentum and this lead going back to the to the halftime. Oh, picked off. Jared Martin didn't let you not to shoot. Wow, the Flames are on fire. Sorry. Ferguson put that back. I see what you did there. I know, it's just so easy. 8-0 run there and a couple threes in a in a layup. Less than a minute on this 8-0 run. Russell drives. Order but a foul. Yeah, Russell is doing a nice job here getting into that painted area. He's got seven points on three of six shooting, looking to go to the line for a couple more points, but Lack of free throw shooting here, missing some front ends, missing two on a, on a foul that Kerwin Smith probably had a dunk. They got a little lackadaisical offensively, I, especially that last play. Just a simple pass was taken. I mean, that's that one right there. I don't know if it was deflection that caused it to slowly travel back up to the top, but heck, you and I could have gotten that one, Barry, and taken it the other way. Three of nine from the free throw line of the Lopes. So Clark comes back in. We had that uh, same sort of action against the Aztecs last week where the Aztecs went on a run, and then the Lopes countered, and the Aztecs went back on a run. It's kind of what happened here. UIC was off to the quick start. Lopes came back. Now UIC's doing it again. Who will take the momentum to the locker room, I think, will be a big determining factor on who's going to have the better second half. Adu called for the personal foul after coming in the game for Shaq Carr. 32-31. A one-point lead now. Just under four to go.
GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light. And now GCU is leading in the area of computer science and IT. With over 200 university degree programs across nine colleges on campus and online, join the most inventive concept in education today. Fast track options available with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, and systems architecture. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty and student advisors. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Finding the right college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice, I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Back live at GCU Arena, 32-31. The Lopes on top, letting the Flames climb back into this game. Yeah, Flames doing a good job here in this first half. They're getting high percentage shots. 12 to 24 from the field, 50% on a lot of rim runs. But let's take a look at them. some of these blocks inside, the dishes underneath. Like, Lopes doing a good job shooting that basketball, too. They're 13 to 23 for 56 percent. Kerwin Smith, a wonderful job once again off that bench. Four points and two big rebounds and a blocked shot and a steal. Long range shot, Whitaker off the mark to the right, off the glass, pulled down by Russell. Clark, quickly to his right, Frayer back out Russell, top of the key. From three-point land, bam! Oscar Frayer! Oscar Frayer has been the man behind the arc. He knocks down another shot. Lopes are now three of four from behind the arc here in this first half, 75%. Dixon, Ferguson, Fifi Adu on him. Support from Odiasi, Bowen. Tries to move on Russell, driving, loses the ball. Oh, my. Russell called with a foul. His second. Now my mom always said, if you got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. I thought no, Russell really played good. pretty good defense there. See if he got a hand in as he tried to get that into Dixit. He's got a very long reach. Steve, you're on the way. Stay in the box. Steve, Steve, Steve. Well, he's havoc. See, Steve, Steve. coaches have to stay in that box. Steve. Is that what the officials were talking to the coaches about? Staying inside the coaching you know, box, have huh? Us let, it, let you know they they go by the book. Inching his way out of that, that restricted area. I think this is a communication problem. Oh, but yeah. Communication problem? You mean here uh, at this arena? I don't, yeah, I don't think, crowd? I don't think coach could hear what it is the officials <laughs> well, were trying you. to communicate. Let's ask Patino and Fisher about that. Odiasi waiting patiently, doesn't drop though. Vernon is there, it's kind of rolled into. Very close, limping on the baseline. We got another guy oh my. limping out here. Wonder if he's Steve twisted an ankle. Oh, grief. Staying in the game, must be okay. I think he wants to come out. Kerwin Smith's gonna come in. Favoring, it looks like he's favoring that left leg. Or ankle maybe. Yes. He's 
going back to the train at table two. Jordy Hackett having a busy first half. Dixon. Dixon took that ball from the right top side of the circle all the way down to the left block and lay that thing off glass. Somebody from GC's got to step up and take Great a charge. Pointer. Good, Russell, man, he made it look easy. Keontae yeah. Vernon has become really adept at passing out of that elbow area. The guy's going back door or across the, across the wing. Dixon trying to drive on Freyer, pushes out, but Fifi got a hand on that. Fifi's got that long seven-foot wingspan. Russell off balance, the foul with Bowen. He's like a praying mantis with this long arm to be able to steal those balls. And then I love that one there. I didn't see Kerwin Smith give him credit on that one, too. He had a nice screen that allowed Russell to free himself for the easy opportunity. And Russell back to the line. Three on Bowen. Dominique Matthews checks in for Bowen. Geis coming in for Whitaker. Gary and Clark is still not back on that GCU bench. I looked and I can kind of catch him sitting on the training table. The trainer's looking down to the lower part of his Leg. You have a diagnosis, Doctor? <laughs> I'm not going there again. At least not tonight. <laughs> Fifi. Trying to take space away from Ferguson. Geis has hit a three pointer in the game. Matthews driving over Vernon, and Vernon would have none of it. Freyer on the run. Right hand doesn't go. Pulled down by Dixon. Ooh, Freyer tried to snag it. Dixon up over the top, and. Kerwin Smith gets called for that. Oh, right. Nope, Vernon. Yikes. Let's send it over to Kate Longwood. Hey guys, I'm just uh, steps away. Darian Clark on the trainer's table right now. He just got his left ankle taped up. Looks like they're trying to stabilize it. And while I'm talking to you, more players are walking off the court. So injury updates will continue to come. Never a good sign when there's more guys dressed in street clothes on the bench than in uniform. But Dan Marley managing with the bench and the bench making things happen when called upon. Well, I think the one thing Coach Marley's done with this basketball club, even given all the injuries, is, to, is not let them feel sorry for themselves about the guys that they don't have that are on the floor that are, you know, the ones in street clothes. And he's he's implored in making these guys play hard. I and mean, that's how they got that win against San Diego State. That's how they battled Louisville right into the second half of that basketball game. And Coach Marley's done a good job of motivating his troops. No doubt about the fact that every man on that bench has had to contribute. Yeah, even some good minutes out of Shaq Carr, who's back in his basketball game again here for the final final minute, 38. Uh, Dixon's at the free throw line. If he misses, you got to get this board. There you go. Shaq Carr to bring it up. First time I can remember Dwayne Russell not being on the floor. Players three off the mark. Ferguson to his left. Matthews leaves it down low for Cola Walla. Oh, Kerwin Smith. Hopes getting cold again as the Flames trying to get back into the game with 118 to go opening half. Now look at Fifi Adu. He's got an ice bag on his abdomen or chest, lower part of his chest. I wonder if he took an elbow or a, or a knee. Kate, you have something? Yeah, guys, he actually got his win knocked out of him. I've covered a lot of football, baseball, soccer, basketball. This is the first time I get to report. It is called the solar plexus flex muscle has been injured. Ice is on it. He got the win knocked out. Got his breath. We'll see what happens in the second half if he's ready to go out there. Meanwhile, it was a sprained ankle for Clark. It's kind of like the solar plexus shot you took from Martin. 
kept you in the game, though. You didn't need any ice or anything. Yeah, he tried to charge me again during the pregame warm-ups. I was ready for him this time. Oh, look at that. That's over there. Yep. You got a bite in. Interesting to, yeah, interesting to note that they have not blocked a shot tonight. This is a team that normally rejects multiple shots throughout the course of a basketball game and had the nation's leading shot blocker and Odiasi from a year ago, and it's the Lopes that have been the ones swatting them away at the rim. They got four block shots. Matthews, Dixon, long three. Rebound high, pulled down by Vernon. Under a minute now to go. Jarrett Day Vernon's done a job on the glass tonight. He's got six big rebounds in traffic. Dixon not afraid to shoot. That's his 10th attempt. Barr pulls back. Now he takes it again from Freyer. 14, 13 on the shot clock. Looking to move on Matthew. Nine, eight, seven. Barr to his left, trying to thread the needle, pushes back out. Ran out of real estate. Yep. Stepped on the line down there. Well, you could just tell he wasn't too sure about what was going to be executed. Well, they took. He, I think he would. He prefers to drive to the right, and they took that away. So he exactly was a little tentative going down that left side of that that key. He has a tougher time finishing on that side than he does the right side of the floor. I do back into the game for Vernon. Are getting any unnecessary fouls? Martin in the game. Freer, Kerwin Smith, and Shaq Carr along with Fifi. 10. Final shot, Ferguson looks to move. Ferguson drives, leaves for Dixon. Dixon trying to drive on Freer. Up underneath, right hand not there. Out of bounds, it'll belong to the Lopes with .6. Officials are trying to come together here to make sure they get this call correct. I think they want to look at this one again on the on the replay. See who that ball went out of bounds on. Good news for GCU, regardless of whose possession this will be, is Coach Marley's record when leading at the half. The Lopes this year four and one. And in Marley's in the Marley era, they're 48 and 14. Wow. So very good front runners. However, I will say this UIC team plays better in the second half. See the clock there? Kara Dunnins are number one stat fan in the business. I wouldn't be surprised. As he mentioned, there probably might be some additional time added, but nothing as of yet. I thought for sure they were still. So they're yep, saying there GCU is. ball, but there they're adding is. some more ticks to that clock. Yeah, what is that? Four tenths of a second they put back we'll on. Have there? to get a shot off, right? Even if it's from. Sure, court. you can catch, turn, and fire. So LeBron James's young 12-year-old make one from half court on a YouTube video the other day. Certainly, one of these Lopes players can do the same. Martin long range shot. Prayer gets it off. Oh. That's a heck of a pass by Martin yeah. over the top of the defense there. Might want to get him a look for the Cardinals in the future. So the Wolves on top, 42-35. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. All right, thanks, guys, Coach. With the seven points lead at half, what stands out to you from your players? Shooting 50% right now, 57% right now. Yeah, defensively, we're not really good. They're getting to the basket, rebounding in, uh, box outing on the free throws, um, all those things. Just stuff that we continue to do wrong. And, can't allow that to happen. I mean, we had a nice little run going, and they got an offensive rebound on the free throw, made a point, or made a three-pointer, got them going a little bit. So we just got to get stops and stop. Uh, they're a great team getting the free throw line. And one thing we saw in the last game was strong production from the bench. We're seeing that again tonight from Kerwin. What can you say when you're dealing with a shorter bench, but they're getting the job done when called upon? Just got to come in and play. This is their time to either get it done or not get it done. And, you know, Kerwin's playing hard. 
Uh, Fifi's got to get it going a little bit. Shaq uh, gave us a lift. You know, he didn't play much last game. He came in and had some solid minutes. All right, thank you very much, Dan Marley. Some words of wisdom, but like you said, his record reflects well at the half. So we'll see what he has to say to his team to keep up this momentum in the second half. Thank you, Kate. Thanks, Coach Marley. Uh, the Lopes finished six of their last nine from the field, while the Flames were one of their last six. So the Lopes hoping to carry over the momentum to begin the second half. They lead it 42-35. Kate Mark will be back with our halftime festivities and much more from Phoenix, Arizona and GCU Arena. Leave it here. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go Lopes. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Founded on the belief that the entrepreneurial dream is an engine that drives innovation forward in a global marketplace, the Colangelo College of Business educates and develops values-driven business leaders. Our graduates exemplify the principles of servant leadership and entrepreneurship. GCU's strong Christian identity informs the education you receive, integrating our Christian values with the business curriculum. The college features more than 25 programs from the bachelor through the master's level catering to traditional, evening, and online students. These programs serve a diverse set of aspiring business professionals who not only learn in the classroom, but gain real-world experience operating actual businesses. Our students also receive unique access to Jerry Colangelo's legendary experience, leadership, and connections throughout the business world. Find out more at gcu.edu business. right now with a seven point lead over the Flames of UIC. I'm Kate Longworth and I'm joined now for our Lopes Halftime Show by Dr. Antoinette Farmer, who is the Dean of the Honors College here at GCU. And today the Honors College with a special launch. Take me through what was happening today. Yes, Kate, we had a phenomenal day today. We celebrated four years since launching the Honors College, and today we recognize students and faculty and the executive leadership. We started with 60 students four years ago, and now we have 1,200 students, and it's just a phenomenal thing that's happening here at GCU. Well, congratulations, 1,200 students is impressive. When I was looking at the numbers and requirements it takes to be a part of the Honors College, Take me through that, because I know our crew is blown away by the GPA. What makes up an honor student? These honor students, needless to say, they're driven, they're passionate, but we want to recruit students who are looking to solve real world problems. So they're coming in with 4.1 GPAs, they're coming in with experience in international baccalaureate programs and advanced placement, and many of them have been accepted to undergraduate Ivy League school programs, but they choose to come to GCU, and so we're grateful for that. Absolutely impressive, and why is this decision so easy for them? Why do they want to be an honor student at GCU? What are the advantages? The advantages are, number one, we're interdisciplinary, so they can study in any program they like. The majority of them study in the STEM programs, so biology, engineering, nursing, and business, and they love the campus climate. It's a great community. They live together. About 80% of them live on campus, and they're doing great things, creating their own speaker series and student clubs. And I tell you, it's phenomenal. They're doing internships. They're doing internships at TGen and USA Olympics. 
and helping with the Zika virus. So they love the opportunities that they're getting here. That's what they tell us. Yeah, that's a great opportunity for college students to be getting that real world experience, as she mentioned. The program growing here at GCU, a lot of kids living here on campus in the Honors College and over 15,000 students living here on campus for GCU overall. I'm Kate Longworth and we'll be back with more Lopes Halftime Show here on 3TV. After the break, Scott and Barry are back with us as well as Mark Lacoos. We'll see you in a minute. There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. We will not disappoint. We will not quit. We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family-friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at lopestickets.com. I am Laura Lozoya, and I am majoring in biology with an emphasis in pre-med at Grand Canyon University. The dorm life at GCU definitely helped me build relationships, and I've made great friends on this campus. The quality education here is great. You're testing your limits, but you're going beyond them. It all comes together, the sciences, the ethics, and just everything. It's a beautiful thing. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. The GCU, GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light, so we can give our students the competitive edge they need to succeed. And now, GCU is leading in the areas of computer science and IT. We prepare students to meet the demands of the fastest growing industry through our innovative IT programs in our College of Science, Engineering, and Technology. Using the latest real-world tools and an adaptive curriculum, GCU gives students the education they need today to excel in their careers tomorrow. Join the most inventive concept in education right now and position yourself for a future in the expanding world of IT. GCU offers fast-track options with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, systems architecture, and business analytics. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. Back live at GCU Arena 4235. Barry Vitell, Scott Williams here on 3TV. The Lopes looking to continue their winning ways after knocking off San Diego State on Wednesday evening. This has been a uh, kind of a back and forth game. Uh, Russell uh, leads the way with 13 points, but both teams have kind of gone on different spurts throughout the first half. Yeah, they, they kind of had to adjust their games as the way the defense was playing. Um, first, the uh, Flames were able to go inside and get easy buckets inside. Then Lopes clamped down, down, down on that. They started firing away from the outside, getting some buckets in transition. But I like the way the Lopes played. They really shared the basketball. They got some steals and some blocks, created those to high percentage shots the other way, shot 56%. In that first half, let's take a look at our halftime highlights. Begin with a 6 0 run led by Dikembe Dixon. Uh, Dixon was uh, off and running in his basketball game. I thought he was going to have a big half, but he finished only 3 of 11 shooting in that, excuse me, not 3 of 3, yeah, 3 of 11 shooting that first half. Oscar Frere came in with a long two point shot. Uh, Tarkas was really good in that first half, as all, and then I love that one underneath there. And nice turn turn there and then I love that block by Kerwin and then Vernon he was wonderful in that first half four points two nice assist then Russell he does uh, gets himself a steal he goes coast to coast puts off the Jets and gets the hoop in the harm he was wonderful we talked about the 13 points he had and three assists and Odi Austin with the strong left shoulder turn to that right hand hook getting getting blocked shots but doing it down low there and then my favorite, Martin, knocks down the long three. One of four of the uh, Lopes' first half threes. Ferguson was fantastic. Four of four from the field in that first half for nine points. And then Frere comes back with yet another long distance shot. And then Russell won more from outside from behind the arc. So really spread the scoring around a little bit. Russell actually even got some time on the bench. So hopefully that serves him well in the second half. He'll have a lot of energy. Four blocks for GCU. They lead it 42-35. We'll step aside, be back with more of our halftime festivities from GCU Arena. As the Lopes trying to hold on to victory here at GCU Arena before they travel to Tucson to battle the Wildcats next Wednesday evening. We'll leave it right here on 3TV. 
Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go low. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Grand Canyon University's newly remodeled golf course is thriving in the heart of Phoenix, featuring over 7,200 yards of expansive tees and tree-lined fairways, signature par threes, greenside bunkers, premium greens, and a brand new clubhouse and restaurant. Experience a university championship golf course this summer with great rates as low as $15 available now. Book your tee times at gcugolf.com. I'm Dewey, a student here at GCU studying communications. My dad graduated from GCU in 2009, and he is definitely bleeding purple. He loves GCU to the max. And me choosing to follow in his footsteps was the best idea I could have chosen. I absolutely love sports, playing them and watching them, and I could talk about them all day. GCU has made it possible for me to pursue my passion of becoming a sports broadcaster. The program they had here and the direction it could take me was exactly what I wanted and what I needed. Knowing that I could talk to a professor or a counselor about literally anything that has to do with my academia or even just my personal life was encouraging and exciting to know. The friends and the roommates that I've had in the last three years have made my quality of life a thousand times better. I am a GCU low and I will forever always be one. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Halftime here at the GCU Arena. It's Elopes on top of the Illinois Chicago Flames, 42-35. Let's take a look at the leading scores in the first half. Mark McLoon from 3TV here with you courtside. Dwayne Russell leads all scores with 13. He's well on his way to a season average of 26. He's the second leading scorer right now in America. Oscar Freire with eight. Darian Clark with seven. And Kerwin Smith, four big points, a big dunk that kind of helped ignite a lopes run the top scores for the flames the kim by the kim dixon with nine targets ferguson with nine clint robinson with eight and that's a look at the top scores right now between these two teams they're on the floor getting set for the second half the lopes try to make it two wins in a row come right back with us here on 3tv i'm dominique i'm a student here at grand canyon university studying hospitality management my hospitality courses here are giving me a high quality education from professors that I know have been successful. Being able to work while I'm in school has enriched my college experience. I feel like I know where I'm going and what I want to do. I've gone through things that can't necessarily be taught. And so that paired with everything that GCU is doing for me, I feel like, you know, is setting me up for success. To have someone say, like, I want you, that's like a lot for someone like me. They're changing people's lives. By changing my life, now you change my little brothers and sisters because they saw that I went to college. It'll just be, you know, my greatest accomplishment, not just because it's a diploma, but because, you know, I did what no one really thought I could do. When they say, find your purpose, they mean it. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Founded on the belief that the entrepreneurial dream is an engine that drives innovation forward in a global marketplace, the Colangelo College of Business educates and develops values-driven business leaders. Our graduates exemplify the principles of servant leadership and entrepreneurship. GCU's strong Christian identity informs the education you receive, integrating our Christian values with the business curriculum. The college features more than 25 programs from the bachelor through the master's level catering to traditional, evening, and online students. These programs serve a diverse set of aspiring business professionals who not only learn in the classroom, but gain real-world experience operating actual businesses. Our students also receive unique access to Jerry Colangelo's legendary experience, leadership, and connections throughout the business world. Find out more at gcu.edu slash business.
Back live at GCO Arena, Barry Vitell, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth, Mark McLoon. As the Lopes are on top, 42-35. Coach Marley chatting with, yes, Dwayne Russell and others. I really like the way the Lope finished that half defensively. They held the Flames to just one of six shooting their last six shots there and were able to stretch that advantage out to seven points. You know, they didn't start the game with their signature alley-oop play. Curious to see if they start the second half with it. Marcus Ferguson to inbound and get the second half underway. The crowd will remain on its feet. Until the Lopes hit that first bucket of the second half. I didn't know they did that in the second half, too. I just thought they did really? that to start the game. Is this your first or game? Or? Where have I been? <laughs> Robinson underneath leaves it. Oh, with authority. Marcus Hottie. He threw that down quick, fast, in a hurry, and with some authority, slamming it through hard. Caught all those loads trying to jump. His first bucket. Adi coming in 12.3 points per game. Russell stops, pop, doesn't fall, pulled down by Odiasi. Dixon moving on Martin, driving, loader up off the glass. Okay. Dixon's just so long. He didn't shoot the ball particularly well in that first half. We mentioned this 3 of 11. Gets that first one to go over Martin. Martin does a good job defensively, just better offense. Flame started on a 6 0 run and then looking sharp here early on. Russell too heavy, pulled down by Dixon. Dixon stops right at the arc. Just for two, but it. Didn't connect. Russell. Russell moves to his left. Pass back over to Freyer. Freyer bounce pass. Vernon turn around. Drops. How about the dunk? Deontay Vernon. Well, I like that one by Vernon because he sets that drag screen and then immediately rolls down the block. And Freyer does a nice job delivering that basketball. Vernon just turned away from the defense and threw it right up over the top. Over to his right, driving there, pushing back Dixon. Had the thought that perhaps he'd try the three. Seven, six on the shot clock. Body looking to move, moves to his right. Drops. Kisadi looking sharp early. One on. long step to get that one up over the top of some pretty darn good defense there. And you're, you're right, he, he's got uh, his eyes set on getting into that paint when he catches the ball. Russell, heavy, pulled down. Robinson looking for something. No whistle. Freyer, three. Short. Oops. Bounce pass, Martin. Yeah, Russell needs to get this team into something right now. They're playing a little helter skelter. Yep. They're better when they work their sets. Adi's going to call for the foul. Ball ball number 23, Marcus Smith getting the start in this second half. So you look at Clark, who... As Kate reported, had that that ankle injury in the opening half. Well, yeah, he he, he went out limping. And Martin went out limping. Ke or, excuse me, Fifi Adu had the ice pack on his chest. I don't see that on his chest anymore. That's a good sign. But a lot of these lopes may have been banged up. I hope that Clark can go give him some minutes here in the second half. Vernon called for his third. Vernon trying to set a screen off the ball. Just uh, moves that left shoulder. Shoulder and hip. Ferguson to his right. Back out. Bowen. Bowen down low. Look out. Dixon by himself. Oh, swatted away by Keontae Vernon. A little block party here between Vernon and Smith. These guys have been swatting some shots. Official saying something to Keontae. Probably just complimenting him on that, that block. Yeah, fifth, fifth block of the game now for GCU. They've stolen a 
page out of the UIC playbook here. Protecting that rim with the block shot. Bounce pass, Robinson. Doesn't. Ball, Kerwin Smith grabbed it. They're getting into that painted area. Didn't get that one to go, and Smith does a nice job snatching that one off the rim. He's got three rebounds in this game now. Wrestling down low. I think they got foul, yeah, a foul Bowen. on Bowen. And Frere had him posted down there on that left block. Smaller player wanted no part of it, just yanked him out of the way. Bowen with four takes a seat. Yeah, Bowen's got to realize that he, he can't can't take that foul right there. You got to just stay behind the stay behind the offensive player. Know that one of your buddies is coming to help you out. Four, four foul on the bench. Russell not connecting here in the second half early on. Dixon picks it up off his shoelaces. Back out. Ferguson to his left. Oh, Dallas wanted that ball down low. Now he's got it. Yep. Goes right. Another one of those sky hook. You got to get up on that left shoulder, though. He's got that shot down. Get up on that left shoulder, make him come back and try to throw that left handed hook. Lead is one for GCU. Smith looking to move. He'll try that move. Doesn't go. Odiasi. Yeah, Keontae Vernon does a nice job getting he doing his work early, gets the inside position. Odiasi wanted it just a couple seconds before that, but if you're Keontae Vernon, you don't want to bite on that little shimmy shake back to his right shoulder. He he doesn't want to go right shoulder. He wants you to buy the right shoulder so he can come back to that left shoulder and throw the right hand hook. Bounce into Freyer from Vernon. He'll go up high, a little short though. That's where Freyer needs a left hand. Yeah. Look at there. Look at there. Great defensive stand there by Keontae Vernon as Clint Robinson throws him over. One point lead, GCU on top of the Flames. Keep it right here. GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light. And now GCU is leading in the area of computer science and IT. With over 200 university degree programs across nine colleges on campus and online, join the most inventive concept in education today. Fast track options available with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, and systems architecture. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty and student advisors. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Finding the right college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice. I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back to GCU Arena, what is in, which is in the holiday spirit tonight. The GCU Lopes take it on the Illinois-Chicago Flames in a very game Illinois-Chicago team down just one here to GCU in the second half. GCU struggling to find ways to score here in the second half. The nation's second leading scorer, Dwayne Russell, well, he's struggling. He's 4 of 14 from the field. We take a look at the NCAA's leading scorers, and here's the list. Marcus Keene of Central Michigan, Dan Marley's alma mater, he leads the NCAA, averaging 31.4 game for a game. Russell right behind him at 26.7 a game. Right now, he has 11, again, 4 of 14 from the field. And then Dikembe Dixon down the list, number 13 for the Illinois Chicago Flames, averaging 22.6 points a game. Right now, guys, he has 11 as well. So the Lopes trying to get things going. What are you guys seeing from over there at the scores table? Why have they 
the ball's not moving right now, and they haven't been able to find a flow here in the second half. Definitely no uh, no flow here for the Lopes in the uh, second half. They're one of eight shooting, and Russell is old for four. Vernon just lets to take it to the hole himself and does draw the foul. It's just, oh, there's like three of them over there. They didn't seem like they knew what they were, where to go. Well, exactly. Hey, the spacing is bad right yep. now offensively, and I kind of wonder if you know, they didn't play since the big win against San Diego State, and they got so many guys banged up. I mean, I know they got some extra bodies on the, on the floor, but you wonder how much, because they've got a shorter rotation, how much practice time Coach Marley's able to get out of those guys. You got Dwayne Russell's been playing almost every minute of every game. Can't be on the floor too much. So sometimes you can get this combobulated when they haven't had enough time to run through their sets. Good to see Darian Clark back on the court. Clark, Martin, Vernon, Russell, and Frayer. Three-point Lopes lead. Dice pulls around Vernon, dishes over to Dixon. Pulled down by Clark. Russell to his right. Moving on Dixon. Has an open lane. Leaves underneath for Clark. Ah, it doesn't go. Dice pulls it in. Yeah, see, yeah, Clark couldn't elevate. There's no way guys are supposed to block Clark shot that easily. He's supposed to go up with power and try to finish over the top. I don't think he can he can elevate on that bad wheel he's got. Russell probably could have just laid it in. Maybe a little too unselfish there by Russell. Because I thought Keontae Vernon had done a nice job creating a little wedge for him to be able to go to his right hand and lay that ball off the glass. I wasn't sure if there was a defender within the area that he would have had to worry about it getting blocked. Well, this is trouble. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. College, you can throw in the backcourt. Body. Ferguson. Eleven, nine on the shot clock. Dixon. Mentioned 4 of 14 in the opening half shooting. Their leading scorer, Hottie. Motor at the buzzer, pulled down by Freyer. Job by Freyer going up high for that one. That's only his second board, but he went, he's got some live legs. Watch out from behind. Ooh, Ferguson trying to pick the pocket of Russell. Back open. Three. Short. Big rebound. Freyer. Oh, wheels on that one. Over to Russell. Floater. Doesn't go. Oh, Clark's there. He puts it back. Well, you give a team multiple opportunities to score, they're going to bound to get one down. I was just the lows out working the planes on that possession. Loner, Martin grabbed it, picked it off. Got Martin on the trail wing if you want it. No look, bounce. Vernon! Nice job by Russell. He's looking to dish a bit more here in his second half. Nice job by Keontae Vernon using his wheels. Timeout. Flames. Oh, yeah, McLean wanted to call that one. Look at that. Didn't look. Leaves it for Vernon. That oh. was pretty nice with the look yeah, away. Right, I didn't sweet. notice that the first time. I thought he was going to flip it back over his, to his left side. And Martin was running just for that spot up three point shot that he likes. DC Lopes in action upcoming. We've been mentioning they'll be traveling down to Tucson to battle the Wildcats. In Arizona, that on 12.30 a.m., Michael Potter and Tom Kuyper, and also on ESPNU, Mississippi Valley State, back here a week from this evening, right here on 3TV. Alcorn State. Cal Poly coming in on the 28th, right after um, Christmas. December 31st, they'll be traveling to Riverside, then back for the start of Western Athletic Conference play against Utah Valley, a much improved team under your buddy, Mr. Pope. And those Aggies coming to town as well. Coming in February, it will be traveling to uh, New Mexico State as well. And Mark Pope getting some uh, transfers coming over. Yeah, second year there. He's trying to build that program up, much like Coach Molly has done here. And I, I love this one here. I, Gary and Clark taking it there with the left hand. That was the first half action. And fighting underneath with the bigs. He was really going at Odiasi's body. Not afraid of the shot blocker. Taking it right to him. And then this is the most recent one there. Even with that bad will, able to get that left hand to 
work for him, even with that heavily banded stuff. So nice job there by DC, making his presence felt tonight. Got that nine points, and I love this one right here. Those four big rebounds. The bigs have really been doing a nice job. Keontae Vernon's got nine. He's trying to go for his season. I got 14 earlier this season. Sherwood Smith's coming there and provided some board work off the bench. Dwayne Russell, we've been talking about his point production, second in the nation, 20 plus points in five of his six games. As he has been stuck on 13 first half points and doesn't have a bucket here in the second. Nah, but he's been he's he's been trying to get buckets and that have led to some either offensive rebounding opportunities or he's dished off a few times. So still not having a effect at the offensive end, even though he's not the one getting credit for the points. Waiting the ropes with four assists, leading all players with four. Ferguson leaves for Odiasi. Frayer got a hand on that. Back out, though, into the hands of Lance Whitaker. Rather, uh, Ferguson. And Ferguson's been on fire. 4-4 four four in that first half, and added again here in the second. Clark up over the top, doesn't hit, and the Flames on the move. Adi. Adi drives high, doesn't go. Foul underneath. If Adi's got the basketball, he's only going one place, and that's to the, to the rim. He's got live legs. He obviously can elevate and finish over the top. We saw him dunk on a couple loops early in the second half, and then that one there, he just put his head down and took it to the rim. He didn't get the basket, but so many of the GCU bigs had to come over and try to distract him that they were able to get the offensive rebound. Originally, the foul called on Vernon. It belongs to Clark. He'll take a seat. That ankle may be hurting. Somebody pick it up. There it is, Keontae Vernon. Left hand doesn't go, got a little fancy. Dixon. Shaq Carr calls for the foul. That break probably would have worked a little better if somebody would have just picked the ball up with two hands. Sometimes you're so worried about picking it up with one hand on the dribble so you can continue your fast break. Hey, it was just a situation where they would have just picked it up with two hands and then dished it to his teammate. I think it would have been enough time for Vernon to finish that with an easy layup, but he thought a shot blocker's coming from behind to get that on the right side. Like you said, tried to dipsy do to the left side of the basket. Created too high a degree of difficulty for himself. up on that room. Dixon. I think the weight of the letters on the basketball got that one to fall back in it. Yikes. Teetering up on the front of that rim for what seemed like an eternity before it slipped back into the basket. We got ourselves a three-point ball game here. These flames are not going easily into the night. Oh, uh, turn it over. Carr made the move to go, then pulled back, kind of faking to come back short, but then Martin had already Pushed it out. I see Martin making, I guess, unforced errors on the floor. He normally makes the sure pass. I thought he maybe tried to get a little too aggressive catching Shaq Carr streaking for an easy two. Ferguson into Santos. Adi Ferguson. Out to the left. Santos leaves for Robinson. Robinson, floater up high, trying to take the feedback from Kolawale. It's Vernon and Robinson get tangled up. Officials on top of that. Yeah, Martin I don't think they, they, tried they weren't really going after each other. No, no, Martin tries to break up the alley-oop here. There's a lot of body contact. I think that's what they get the whistle for, but Martin, come, he, uh, excuse me, Vernon grabbed the basketball, but he had the man underneath him, and so it caused him to lose his balance and go down on top of, on top of Robinson. The officials jumped in there just to make sure 
everybody knew that it was just a legitimate play and so there wouldn't be a fracas breakout. Martin called for the personal foul. Two-point game with Robinson at the line to shoot again. Coach Marlin looking at his play calls there. He needs a good play here on this offensive possession. Something they get a high percentage shot. They've been really struggling getting good looks. One of the Flames have had opportunities to set their defense. One-point game, Matthews in for Ferguson for the Flames. Shot car to his left. Looking to drive high off the glass. I think that would be a pretty good one. He did the whole horns high pro set there. Give the ball handler opportunity to come off of either elbow screen. I said Chad Clark couldn't dribble the ball strong to his left hand. I was mistaken. But shut up, Williams. I'll show you I can do it. Matthews to his right. Audie. Hide by Kong. Robinson over there to help. Moves to his left. Dishes down low. Santos up high. Short. Kicked out. Vernon on the run. Leaves for Russell. Bounce pass up high. Lean in. Doesn't go, but he draws the foul. Boy, Dwayne plays those really well. Real proud of Vernon that time. Giving the basketball up to the better ball handler. Timeout on the floor. 52-49. The Lopes on top of the Flames. Second half action. 11.47 to go. Leave it here on 3TV. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. We will not disappoint. We will not quit. We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family-friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at LopesTickets.com. I am Laura Rosoya, and I am majoring in biology with an emphasis in pre-med at Grand Canyon University. The dorm life at GCU definitely helped me build relationships, and I've made great friends on this campus. The quality education here is great. You're testing your limits, but you're going beyond them. It all comes together, the sciences, the ethics, and just everything. It's a beautiful thing. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. Well, welcome back. You're watching college basketball here on 3TV. No, this isn't a fishing show, but you may be confused when you see this next image. A live look in GCU Arena where the Lopes are on top right now, 52-49, with 11 to go in the second half. All right, how did this come about? Oh, my goodness. I was like, what is going to distract the other team? I was like, let's just hang a big old dead fish in front of his face. A strike back nonetheless. So he comes to the game in a bad you know, how does this all unfold? You get the idea, but then how do you get them here? Oh, so that takes some special, uh, special stuff. I, I freeze it in my room, and I use the same fish every game. It doesn't smell, so that's good. We'll talk to roommates on that one. But guys, this is a striped stri bass from Costco, and it seems to be doing the job with the Flames head to the free throw line. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it doesn't smell. Yeah. Way to go, Carson. Yeah. That is a good fish. But, uh, Play that baby up a little better. I heard that one always say the dog doesn't shed, and I find nothing but hairballs all over the, the house because of <laughs> supposedly. He doesn't shed. Mm. That fish doesn't smell. What's that about? Five point low. 25 pound fish, what? That was the other thing. Check car for the foul away from the ball. Second personal foul on Chat. Flames the inbound. Matthews. Into Santos. Santos back over to Adi. Adi looking into Coach McLean. 
Green coming up on the court. Giving his team instructions. Adi takes the feed from Oliasi. Adi with a nice drive to the bucket. Yeah, he went at right down the lane there. Vernon had to be careful. He's had a good job tonight. He's got 10 points and 10 rebounds, but he's got three personal fouls, and he didn't want to pick up his fourth there. Martin to his left, down to Russell. Driving baseline, nice sweet move, right hand doesn't go. Vernon follows up, bounce pass, Carr drives into the paint. He leaves underneath, Keontae Vernon can't get it off. It's plucked away by Odiasi. Adi, look out, here come the Flames. Olawale over to Matthews, three-pointer off to Martin. Russell, and by Santos, gets it over to Martin. Back over to Dwayne Russell, 10-42 and counting. Russell stops, pops, too heavy. Big rebound, Fifi couldn't get there in time. 4-14 shooting now for Russell. I was worried about his legs, and there it is, Martin again, giving up his body, taking the charge. Olawale. Those are those little things that Martin just does a great job. Of course, leads the team in steals. High basketball IQ there, I say it. Probably about once a week, this guy is just the smartest basketball player on the court most times. You're just saying nice things about him now because you, you're afraid of him. <laughs> intimidated, huh? Yep. He came over and asked me if I was all right. I said, you can't bend steel. Well, yes, he can. Carr, Mark. Reeves for Carr. All right, Dwayne Russell will turn, drive, baseline, back behind his back, lays it in, right hand, oh, not there, Shaq Carr tried to tap it back in. See what I mean, a lot of those plays a week, 10 days ago, Russell was finishing at ease, and yeah. now I think the fatigue factor is catching up with this young man, he's not able to get a lot of these little floaters and runners to drop. Oh, Bait in the second, the low, Vernon, and Russell. Vernon, oh, he comes down limping. Well, he got Grimacing. a quad or hamstring or something in that left leg. He's kind of reaching towards the lower Yeats. part, upper part of his left leg. Smith called up by Marley to get up and come in for Keontae. Yeah, Keontae holding that left thigh. Oh, well. Oh, over to Bowen. And look at him bringing in the three. A two-point ball game. That was good execution. They loved to play the to play before, but that was a really good play and easy look. Martin back to Russell. Martin looking for three. That's going to be short. Picked off by Vernon. Oh mercy! Oh, he had it and he lost it. Picked up his 12th board there. Gave him a, a, a dozen rebounds. And I love that one right there. He, Maybe fortuitous that it went off his foot, but then he takes his time and he gathers it. Notice when he, something when he hops right here, kind of a funky looking hop there off balance, cause a little strain on that leg. Russell's gonna take a seat, that's pretty rare. Ferguson looking to move. Sweet left hand. Look at here, tied at 56. Yeah, new ball game here. Eight and a half minutes to play. Fifi a Jones! He's getting some confidence on shooting that corner three. Odiasi took a fall at center court. Yeah, sniper got him. Yep. Fifi and Freya in the game. They were the stars of the game against San Diego State, no doubt. 34 points between them. And shot goes up. Fifi, Shaq Carr underneath, leaves it for Freya. That is a very unselfish low team. It seems like they will give up a layup, contested layup, to make sure that their teammate gets an uncontested layup. 5 0 Lopes run here. Santos looking for some room, runs into Martin. Martin couldn't believe it. 
Barely went off of him. Timeout on the court, 7.44 to go. It was tied at 56 then. The Lopes go on a tear and open it up back to five. 61-56 is the score. Leave it here. Our company is Comfortpedic Inc. We're a local mattress company here. It's a small family business that my dad started. Now we are providing the dorm mattresses to the most recent dorms here at GCU. One of my professors, he was a professor for my junior year, Paul Waterman, he was the one that started everything. Without him, like, this wouldn't have been possible. I came up with a short presentation, a very a quick business pitch. I present to Dr. Gibb with my company history, and, and he loved it. So first we started with the hotel mattresses. Brett Courtwhite was very helpful, and um, everything ran smoothly. From there, we began with the dorm mattresses. We asked him what exactly they were looking for in a dorm mattress, and that's when we started to come up with a prototype. We brought in one of um, the mattresses that GCU currently has. We opened it up. We saw where they needed improvement and, and what we could do best to like maximize a better prototype, and we came up with the mattresses that we have now, and after that, everything ran pretty smoothly, thankfully. <laughs> you can see the community thriving along with GCU, and just the fact that GCU was willing to buy locally from a company that's only 10 minutes away, you can tell that they really want the community to grow with them. I'm very proud to say I'm a Lope, and I, and I tell it to everyone, like, go to GCU, Lope's up. I'm very, very proud. for both the men and women Lopes. And today, the Lady Lopes in action against Cal Poly. They pulled off the W64-59, the final there. And leading the way with a double-double was no other than the WAC Player of the Week, Karina Laramie. She had a double-double, as I mentioned, 21-11. And she has been named the Western Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Player of the Week. This marks her first WAC honor since joining the program for the 2016-17 season. She averaged 26 points and eight boards in three games last week. The senior forward center from St. Louis currently leads the conference in scoring at 20.5 points per game. Brent May, Baller. GCU women's team playing really well. Yeah, she did it done. Yep. Body to inbound. GCU eight steals, 12 fast break points. Make it nine. Yeah. yeah. Fifi Adu, Freyer up high. Oh! 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 Oscar Freyer! Welcome to GCU! Well, Oscar Freyer knocked my headset off with that slam. Like, when Fifi Adu let it go, I went, oh no, another bad pass. And then Freyer came parachuting down from the rafters, slammed that one down. That got the Havocs going. That rocked Oakland. Here he comes, Oscar Freyer! Big 9-0 run, just when the Lopes needed it. Timeout! Yeah, Dwayne Russell, second, nation's second leading scorer. First one off the bench to congratulate these Lopes getting it done on the floor. Gonna love that one there. Let me get that from another angle here. Look at that action there. Never put two hands on it, just controlled it with that big right paw, and then gets in the passing lane there, and then right down the runway for flight 23, taking off. 65-56, Oscar Freyer, the freshman from Moreau Catholic. Former yeah. teammate signing on, Damari Milstead. Uh, 14 points tonight, three rebounds, a number of steals, and then some f fantastic finishes. I said flight 23. I think I was thinking of Michael Jordan, Chicago Bulls days. But it, looked, it looked a little number like four, that. Number four, flight, flight four works too. Oh, having some fun, fun with this young freshman, but oh. he's been playing some really good basketball. Real smart, yep. Here in the month of December. He's a sponge, he just wants to learn. 
Great attitude. Adi up high, up over. Fifi Adu climbed the ladder. That's one heck of a hard fought basket just when the Flames needed it. He's got eight points here in the second half. This is with Russell on the bench, up high, not there. But Coach Barley wanted to dial up that high handoff he likes so much. That's the one I'd say is his, his signature play call to start basketball games. He was going for a knockout punch. So Frere could have got that slam to go. Don't get too loose. Bowen driving. Jared Martin calling. Uh, good news is that's only the sixth team foul on the low, so it's baseline out of bounds for UIC. Bowen quickly inbounding to Dixon. Dixon with 13 points, coming in leading this team, 22.6 per game. Bowen back to his right, Ferguson. Bounce pass. Turn around, big hook again from Odiasi. Uh, Odiasi and uh, Ferguson, they, they both like that left shoulder turn to that right hand jump up. Taught very well. Five point lead. Carr tried to get the bounce pass into Kerwin Smith off the feet of the Flames. Six oh two to go. If you look at the other Western Athletic Conference scores down below. Inbound by Fifi into Jared Martin. How much longer Coach Marley's going to keep Dwayne Russell on that GCU bench? This is starting to become the crunch time here. They're trying to come in, trying to keep it in, and stepped out. It's easy when you're getting steals and dunks and. Offensive rebounds, fast breaks for dunks, but when you got to work that half court set, I, I like a do and check car. I just don't know if I like them both out there together. I, I like the steady factor of Russell with either one of those guys. Let's see what happens with the Flames get the next bucket. Ferguson, three pointer, and it connects. Marley looks at his bench, they're on a 7 0 run. The yeah. Flames are not going home quietly. He's getting Vernon and Russell back up off of that bench. Two point basketball game here. Martin to his right. You. Looks for three. Too heavy. Looks banging into one another. Freyer and Drew and Smith. Look out, Dixon for three, and he connects. The Flames are now on top by one. A 10 0 run by UIC. Good timeout taken. They came out and they executed their offense. They got some transition baskets, and it's Coach Marley now finds his team trailing three kicks under five minutes to go here. Lopes are going to have to battle from behind if they want this one. Take a look at this last three. Bowen dishes over to Dixon. Some unselfish play there by the Flames to get the open guy. Dixon, who's been cool all night, has a shot a real high percentage, 4 of 16, before he gets that long three to go, his second of the night. So 4.57 left to go on the clock. One point UIC lead after the Lopes. That appeared to kind of blow things open here with Oscar Freyer hitting a couple of big buckets. And the Flames come back with a couple of big threes. Russell and Vernon appear to be back off the bench and into the game, it looks like. They'll be joined by Darian Clark, Martin, and Freyer. Add the wood. Very surprised if this would be Russell having the basketball in his hand, running some sort of high pick and roll, or maybe even a double high pick and roll for him to try to get to the hole and make a shot for himself or create something for one of his teammates here. A little full court pressure by the Flames here. Russell, no back off to the Flames. Well, here we go. Vernon leaves for Russell. Russell 
Out to Martin, looks for three. Off the mark, the rebound to Vernon. Fresh 30 on the shot clock. Why not, Vernon? He's got 13 of them. Stopping and popping is Russell. That's off the mark. Vernon, boy, look at Deontay Vernon. Russell, wide open three. That's flat. Yikes. It's getting really chilly. The dish underneath doesn't connect. Clark after that. That would have been a big swing for the Flames. Adi unable to convert. Yeah, Russell's had a gas. 4-17 yep. shooting in this basketball game. That was one of the keys we circled. Would this man, man have a, enough in his tank to finish this basketball game? Oh, up high, misses the mark. Doesn't go for Clark off balance, bending backwards and doesn't fall. Yikes. 3-51 and counting. Team looks fatigued. Dixon, just inside the arm, looking, twisting, turning, goes up, right hand, doesn't go, foul called. 3.41 to go. Keontae Vernon called. Fourth personal foul. Timeout on the floor with the Lopes trying to battle back into the game. Stick around, you'll want to see this finish. There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. We will not disappoint. We will not quit. We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family-friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at lopestickets.com. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. GCU offers more than 200 innovative programs across nine colleges, which now include cutting-edge next-generation programs in engineering, computer science, and information technology. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. with under four to go and take a look across the nation at the NCAA top 25 rankings. If you remember, it's a new number one this week as one Wildcat squad replaced another. Kentucky lost to UCLA last week, making room for the Villanova Wildcats who had a big victory over the Irish today, 74-66 the final. UCLA jumped up to second from 11 after that win last week over Kentucky. Meanwhile, University of Arizona Wildcats did drop to number 20 after they lost to Gonzaga last weekend. However, back in the win column tonight at Missouri as they take the W from the Tigers, 79-60 the final there. Iowa State rounding off the top 25. Guys, back over to you. Thanks, Gabe. The Lopes in the first half we shot 55%, second half 29%. Yeah, and likewise, uh, the, the other side of that, UIC Flames, they've been shooting 52% all season long in the second half. They're at 54 and a half percent right now. So they're even playing better than they normally do in the second half, getting high percentage shots. Dixon connects two big ones there, and they open up a three-point lead, 3-37. They're on a 12-0 run. Yikes. Lopes haven't scored in 339 and counting. Inside, Clark gets fouled. Adi. Nice pass down low out of the corner from Jared Martin. Clark wanted to go up there and dunk that one, but someone was able to poke it away. Now this is where the big fella's got to knuckle up and knock down a couple free throws. Big one there. Adi with four personal fouls. Vernon has 14. He's also got 14 rebounds with season high for Keontae. 
Two big buckets there by Darian Clark. Yeah, Darian Clark, he really did show up big. He was 10 of 21 on the season, 47% before the start of this game, and knocked them both down cleanly with a steal. Ah, Freyer with the steal. Hurt in, calming down, giving back to Martin Lees for Russell. One point lead for the Flames. Bounce pass, Clark, turning. Back out, Freyer. Freyer drives. Heavy, rebound, pulled down Dixon. Russell got a hand on it. Good job by Dwayne Russell. To his left, stopping, popping. That's short. Dwayne definitely feeling all the minutes now. Yeah, every, every not there. He's front, front rim, and he doesn't have that strength in that lower body to finish the way he normally does. Still has 15, but 4 of 18 shooting. Up high, Odiasi unable to get it. Very risky play that time by the play. Not necessary. The risk didn't benefit the reward on that particular alley-oop there. That's the way this play team plays. They like to throw the high hand off. Ooh, Dixon almost picked that off. Martin, Russell, Russell driving paint. Moses, floater, and oh, Russell just takes it. Didn't like what he saw from some of his teammates. Ropes back up by one. Two see. minutes. Russell just trying to gut this ball game out. Seventeen for Russell. Got it. Driving. Freyer got a hand on it. Back out. Oh, almost picked off. Back to Dixon. Looks for three. Got a hand on it. Foul claw. Who's it on? Is it on? Freyer? If it's on Burner, that's his fifth. Freyer. That's a three-point shot, so they'll give him three free throws on this one. They almost had the trap down on the baseline. Somehow they get the ball over to Dixon, and you can see it. Yeah, he just comes across and catches a part of his hand there. Mm -hmm. the line. Oh, big miss there. Huh? Now it's got to get it going. Darian Clark's trying to get them riled up. Yeah, Dixon's an 82% shooter from the free throw line. He's got two more coming. Where's that fish? That rings out. Brayer wants the crowd revved up. Yeah, that would have an on this 82% shooter. Got a little craziness going on behind the basket. The and the Havocs behind us have raised their a donation level. from the charity stripe of the Flames and Dixon with a big one to tie it. He connects. One and three. We are tied at 69, 134 and counting. I did not see this one coming nope. down to the wire. I thought Lopes were going to be able to put them away when they had that nine point advantage. Hopefully, this won't be. Days of UNO last year. Russell! Ooh. Tempted with that three. Now he drives. Stopping, popping off the mark to the left. Tip back out. Vernon trying to grab it and he does. Fresh 30 on the clock. Oh. Timeout. Oh. Official looking at Clark. What? Call timeout. Officials are saying that Darian Clark called timeout underneath. Molly talking to the officials now. Yikes. Okay, let's see if we see something. Boy, he's pretty adamant about it. There you see it. Larry Clark, does he call the timeout? I didn't, I didn't see, I a, didn't see it. I didn't all. see a, 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 a sign it. with his hands or any or his mouth wasn't moving where he even verbally said timeout. Yeah, I think this crowd might have got to the maybe somebody from the crowd called timeout behind the official. Yeah, he's talking to Clark now. Clark's 
Clark's not gonna, Clark's not letting him off the hook by saying, yeah, call a timeout. He's just playing basketball. He had already called it there. He's not even looking oh, Mar at Martin, Martin, maybe. Martin looks like he might have been signaling timeout. Inbound, Russell. Comes back out front, cuts back in underneath, burning off the glass. And it dropped hoop and a high. Hello. Deontay Vernon is doing his darn thing tonight. Six of 11 now from the field. 14 points, a season high, 15 boards. How about the dish? Look at, Ver look at Russell. I love that right there. Just a little corner pick and roll. Out of that short corner, no time for the help side defense to rotate over. Keontae Vernon gets the hoop in the harm and go to the line for an opportunity to push this thing out to a three-point advantage. Keontae Vernon on the season shooting 68% from the free throw strike. Season high 15 boards for Keontae Vernon on the floor with four personal fouls. Whatever happens on this made or miss, the Lopes have to make sure that they set their defense here to be able to get a stop. Oh, big, big. Well, push up. You don't want to give up an easy two, but you don't want to give up a clean look at three. Everybody stay with their man. Look out. Dixon pulls down. He's going to drive. Swatted out. Pulled out. Oh, Russell! Russell! He picked the pocket! Russell! About 16 seconds differential, shot clock to game clock, and the Flames are going to try to play for a stop here. Lefty knocked the foul to try to extend the game. 14 steals, 13 on the shot clock. Russell, Marley says go. Russell to his left, pulls back to his right, driving into the paint, stopping, popping. Rebound, oh, let's get Freyer! Freyer, now they've got to do something. Over to Freyer again. Ball movement, foul by Ferguson on Russell. Oh, did you see Freyer? He climbed up. I wonder ladder couldn't get that high. Oscar Freyer has been doing some work above the rim tonight. He had the big dunk earlier in the game and then a huge offensive rebound there. Now if Russell can get a couple free throws with only 12.3 seconds left, he could salt this game away. Pin drop. And it doesn't go. <laughs> I think the it. Flames forgot that that was a two shot foul and not a one and one. So this is really the big one. You really would have liked to got two free throws down, but this is the one that makes it a two possession game. Oh, crucial. He's upset Russia. that he didn't get them both, but he got the big one he needed. Body. Twisting, turning, goes baseline. Oh, right, double dribble. Oh, my. Don't travel. Oh, McLean. Let the official have it. Yeah, he definitely lost the ball, picked it up, and dribbled it again. I wonder if Bobby won't get it. Make sure he gets a timeout here to get the right players in the game. The high percentage foul shooters. 73-69. Four seconds remain. They will be all over the Lopes on the inbound. Yeah, you got to get Darian Clark out of this game. You got to get Vernon out of this basketball game. Get some good foul shooters in there. Wow, uh, family, friends, are you seeing what's happening here at GCU Arena? Your opportunity to come out to GCU Arena. These kids are going to enjoy the holiday break. Be sure to get your GCU men's basketball tickets now. They're going to make great stocking stuffers, season and single game tickets on sale. Four more non-conference games left here at the arena in 2016. Plus great WAC conference matchups starting in January. Utah Valley, New Mexico State, Seattle University, and CSU Bakersfield all on the schedule. Reserve your tickets right now. Contact the box office at 602. 639-8979 for log on to lopestickets.com. Deontay Vernon. Deontay Vernon has been a beast tonight in this basketball game. And swatting shots, running in transition. I love that look away there by Russell. And I love this one right here. That was a big one in this basketball game. This led to a couple easy opportunities for the Lopes. But the offensive boarding. That was a big one. That was the first of two real big offensive rebounds 
It helps solve this basketball game away from the low. Well, let me not say that yet. Still four seconds to go. I've seen crazier things happen in this crazy game of basketball. Martin quickly up to Fifi Adu on the run. Driving up a... Doesn't fall. And that is the basketball game. Long swing! Long swing! 73-69. Woo! That was a bit of a nail biter. It was a little closer than it probably needed to be, but give the UIC a lot of credit. They did not go quietly into the night when they fell behind in the second half. They fought back, got that lead, and I don't think either team can walk away from this one disappointed. They really, really battled. Time for our player of the game, and that would be Keontae Vernon. Double, double. Double, double is right. 15 and 15 on 6 of 11 shooting. Just a wonderful game by this young man. Let's send it over to Kate. Well, we got a little lucky, but, uh, you know, we played hard. We do uh, drills and practice all the time. I told them the last three minutes, loser runs. And that's what we do in practice. So they got it up, got some great steals, played hard. Uh, you know, we survived. Dwayne had a bad night. Uh, we can't afford that. But the good thing is we won and we get to move on. So I'm proud of our guys that we were able to win a game. Ugly, but a win. Yeah, those nights when your stars take a bit of a fall up there, the bench and the youngsters really stepping up. Back-to-back -back games, we've seen some amazing presence from Oscar. What's that say about him? We're so young, he's making an impact. Well, on I knew he's going to be talented. He's a talented kid, and uh, that's why he plays a lot of minutes, because he's got to be thrown in there. And he's going to be really good. He's got to keep working, which he does. He's got a great attitude. Um, but he's going to be good, so we're lucky to have him. All right, thank you so much. Congratulations on the W. Best of luck in Tucson on Wednesday. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Coach Marlies. Well, they were gritty till the end, and Oscar Freyer stepped up, burning with four personal fouls, and the Lopes pick up their fifth victory. Hey, look, these guys are shorthanded. You got guys over there that have surgery. They got guys that get banged up, leaving the game to get more tape on their ankles, ice bags on their chest, but they don't quit. They just keep battling. It's not always pretty, but just real happy for the way this team competes. And I, as a coach, I'm sure Coach Marley doesn't want anything more than that just go out there play your hardest let the chips fall where they may now they're on a two-game win streak back above 500. well the lopes head down to tucson next wednesday evening to challenge the 20th ranked u of a wildcats in a late 9 p.m tip-off you can watch the game on espnu our next televised gcu game will be saturday when the delta devils from Missouri, mississippi valley state are right here in phoenix the Lopes pregame show, hosted by Kate Longworth and Tim Ring, starts at 6.30 p.m., tip-off shortly after at 7. You can also watch the game online at gcu.tv or listen to Michael Potter and Tom Kuyper on Fox Sports 9, 10 a.m. That'll do it from GCU Arena, where tonight GCU beats UIC 73-69. Remember to tune in to 12.30 a.m. this Wednesday. Michael Potter, Tom Kuyper, the Lopes travel to Tucson to battle the Cavs. The Kate Longwood, Scott Williams, Mark McClune, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel, wishing you a wonderful evening.